Okay. Welcome to Taking Action. I'm Chris Colombo. With me, as always, is Anthony Conover. And uh, a hell of a fine gent. Not okay. sure. <laughs> it comes natural. Uh, today's show, we're going to go over week seven. We're going to give our predictions for week eight. A uh, few things to go over, especially with the juice reel. And uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Taking Action, Anthony. Let's go. Okay. Uh, how about I take the lead? Yeah, go ahead. I'm the older gent, so I take the brunt of it. You know, what do they say? Uh, elder or something about elders. I don't know. The writers. I don't know. Go ahead. Take the lead. All right. Thanks. All right. Appreciate it. All Anything right. for you, pal. Okay. Uh, our main pick did not stand up. That's uh, three losses out of seven, right? Yeah, uh, well, uh, on the weeks, yeah. And then obviously, I know uh, we took Here's the, the only thing I'm doing differently now than I've done in the past. And the juice reel was supposed to alleviate that. Because right now, we're sitting here on a Tuesday. You're not seeing this till Thursday. So the lines could change. Things could change. The juice reel allows me to go in and, and change. And what's happening is, for the 40 years I've been doing this, plus... My picks, I always they always came out Monday night, Tuesday, latest Wednesday line was given out in the NFL. I made my bets then. I made my adjustments then. And then when I, I got barraged, I had to think on my feet as a bookmaker. Okay, that, that's gone. That's what the juice reel. Those of you that don't have it, you should get it. If you want the main pick, and it's going to win. And secondly, those that do have it, if you don't know how to use it, go into descriptions. Okay. My pick for this week is already up. Yes, it is already it posted. It has been up. I'm going back to the way I do things. Because <laughs> here's what aggravates me. And it aggravates me the most. The longer I wait, if there's a problem, the reason the juice rail on an injury report that I think is vital, okay, or a line change, I may double hit it or buy it back if something's fishy. And what I've noticed that's happened is, and Anthony will tell you this too, Every week, my main three picks win. On the, on the three weeks I lost, the other two stood up that we were contemplating betting. Yeah. I still would have went with the Patriots against the 49ers, there's no doubt. But if I didn't wait to the end, the other two winners, I don't go with the Atlanta Falcons because now that they put a line out a week in advance, because you could not only bet week seven now, you can bet week eight. Oh, yeah, you can bet week eight and week nine now. Week eight and week nine. Yeah. So... My picks, but I'm going to bet, I already know. That's why that one's out already. Yeah. And what happened is on week eight, I like the Colts and I like the Steelers, but the Steelers is my main pick. Yeah, we had four okay. stars. Yeah, I said it on the show. Anyway, moving forward, do not fret. I have never lost more than four games in a season. This has happened once before, and what I've done is I have never lost two of my picks in a week. No, we've been pretty good on that. Right. So we are not losing any more positions. Worst comes to worst, if you see a loss, pay attention to your juice reel. If possible, with the time frame, I will put a second pick. And the worst thing it'll be is a push. Notifications. Yes. Very important. I, I'm reading. I didn't get it. No reason you didn't get it now. I put it out as soon as the lines came out. Okay. Let's go into this week so we understand it. <laughs> I have never had more than four losses in a season, ever. And I'm not starting now. Four is my max. I don't even want them, number one. Two of them is because I waited too long. If I'd have went with my primary pick early, it would have won my fault on me. Uh, I listened to, to uh, comments very seriously. I'm not listening to any more Juice Real comments. Okay, I may double hit. I may buy back. I may catch a slide. And if a pick does not stand up, I will have another pick, which I, the odds are, and it's never happened in my life that I've picked two games to go and, and they both lost. Never, ever. And it's not going to start now. So the worst we're going to have on a week is a push from moving forward. 
So I'm getting very, very aggressive back to what worked for me forever. This waiting for the injury report and waiting for gossip, I could care less about. If it's a big enough problem, I will buy back and there will be another play. Or buy back and there will be no play if I don't see anything worth betting. But there's been, and I was 7-2 last week. People said I was 7-3 and three the week before. But whatever they want to say, I mean, it was good. And every bet I was going to bet each week, other than my main pick, when it went yeah. down, won. <laughs> Literally every pick. Every pick. So I'm not here to lie. I'm not here to blow smoke. I'm not here to get dementia. I'm here to win. And I take it personally. Okay, let's go. Uh, Broncos Saints. Yeah, 33 to 10 win for the Broncos over the Saints. That was a <laughs> mess of a game. Yeah, I lean towards the under, but I'm not getting involved with unders and overs, especially with this two week jump, unless I'm going to play middles. Because it also gives the smart money two weeks to tighten up. So if you don't bet them two weeks in advance, you're going to get the worst of the number. Let's go forward. Go ahead. Uh, the Jags got a 32-16 to 16 victory over the Patriots. That was in good old London. Uh, nothing too major over there. The Seahawks beat the Falcons 34-14. Uh, just, of course, stop me if you will. That was our play. Yep. Okay, let me just add a couple things about that game. Of course. I don't think the Falcons came to play. Uh, Except well, Robinson. All I'm saying is, if you do a wide receiver pass and you throw a lob in the air around three defenders, I don't understand how it's not picked off. I don't know how that. The I don't understand. It was a meatball. That's what I'm saying. I don't understand how Listen, that ball I'm did not, not get intercepted. It's choreographed. What I'm saying is, that game was not choreographed. What I'm saying is, it's like a smaller choreographed game. They just didn't come to play. They were asleep at the wheel. No, they may have been looking forward, or they might have thought that the Seahawks. We're not capable of beating them. And when they started getting punched in the face, they just backed down. And they didn't want to do what it takes. Like the Buccaneers tried, but they ended up losing both their receivers. Yeah, no. So Mike it was Evan. not a game-changing game for the Saints. Fair but enough. it was for the Seahawks. Yeah. All right, let's move forward. Uh, Bills with a 34-10 to victory over the Titans in that one. Uh, Bengals at the Browns. Bengals with a 21-14 victory. Obviously, news out of that one. Deshaun Watson, I believe it's the ACL that he tore, or his uh, ACL or Achilles. I uh, can't remember off the top of my head, but either way, he's out for the year. Uh, Texans at the Packers, 22 or 24-22 victory for the Packers on a last-minute field goal there. The Dolphins at the Colts. Colts with a 16 to 10 victory. Anthony Richardson back in action. Uh, uh, just not to interrupt you. That was one of my primary picks also. Yes, it was. Um, the <laughs> Lions at the Vikings. Like obviously a game everybody wanted to watch. Lions with a 31-29 victory. Heck of a game there. Come back from the Vikings. Fell a little short. Uh, the Eagles at the Giants. The Saquon revenge game. 28 to 3 win for the Eagles in that one. We go over to... What do you see there? Man. But I don't know what the Giants... Yep, no. Mm. Uh, the Raiders at the Rams. Rams with a 22-15 victory in that one. Um, we continue... 20-15, I have. Yeah, 20-15. Is that not what I said? I'm sorry. 22, I thought you said. 20-15 on that one. Uh, the Pan That game went to seven. If you got it early, you won. Yep. And then if you got it late, you lost. Yep. Okay. Also, that's another one. Aiden Aiden O'Connell, I believe his name is, the quarterback that they had replacing Gardner Minshew. I think he's going to be out like six to eight weeks now. to seven. Who did I circle? Yeah, that's the Raiders. Okay, go ahead. Um, the Panthers at the Commanders. Commanders rolling still. 40-17 to 17 win. Jaden Daniels got a little banged up. He has a bruised rib. He'll be out a couple weeks. Marcus Mariota is going to take over there. Uh, we go to the Chiefs in the four. We both love that game. Yeah. But... I'm not telling anybody to lay eight and a half, seven, eight. You don't need me to tell you that. Go ahead. The Chiefs and the 49ers, 28-18 win for the Chiefs. Uh, I mean, Brandon Ayuk tore his ACL, I believe, in that game. Debo Samuel's in the hospital now with pneumonia and fluid in his lungs. So I hope they get better. Uh, absolutely. No prayers. The Jets at the Steelers. Steelers with a big 37-15 victory. Devon, uh, Russell Wilson, obviously, uh, he became the starter this week. Devontae Adams gets traded over. Didn't make much of a difference for the Jets. Uh, so, big win for the Steelers. Definitely. That was our pick last week, if I bet early. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, to the Monday night games. The Ravens got a 41-31 victory over the Bucks. Once again, circled. And uh, to cap it off, 
It was a 17-15 victory for the Cardinals over the Chargers on a last second field goal. So that's week seven. Can't believe it's already week eight. We right, halfway that's through right. the season. All right, just let me remind you one more time. Our play is already in. Yes. You should. I mean, obviously this will be posted on Thursday, but we made it already. So if you're not seeing it, I I don't even know how okay. it's possible. If that play should happen to lose, there will be another one. And I guarantee it don't. Okay, let's move forward. Because anything could happen. It's still gambling. But let's move forward. I have never made two picks and both of them lost ever in my career. And I'm not waiting to the last minute except to buy back or to double hit. Go ahead. We kick it off Thursday night football. The Vikings at the Rams. Uh, to, uh, the spread there. Vikings open as three-point favorites. They're still three-point favorites. That total jumped around a little bit from 46 to 47. Now at 48. Well, that means they're anticipating more scoring. Yep. Or it wasn't a right total based on that they put it out two weeks ago. Uh, a lot of rumors going around in this game. Uh, apparently, the Vikings are looking into trading for Matthew Stafford. Uh, the Rams are looking to potentially trade Cooper Cup, who's obviously their number one wide receiver. He is, you know, expected to play, I guess, this week coming back from injury. They just uh, activated... Puka Nakua off of IR. They opened his 21-day window to practice, so obviously I don't believe he's not going to play in this game, but, uh, you know. He's very good. No, they're both both very good. Um, no, one's back, one isn't. Yeah. So, but, I mean, Cooper Cup might be traded. Matthew Stafford might be traded. So, lots of lots of stuff going on in this in this game, but. Uh, I, I think Donald's done an exceptional job. I mean, they're 5-1. and one. He's played very well. I mean, he lost one game and they're mad at him. <laughs> And this is to the Lions, who I think is the best team. Those three. Uh, <laughs> it's an unforgiving world, and you're right. You're only as good as your last deal, your, your last deed, or your last pick. But we're doing it. Trust me. Uh, I love the Vikings. Uh, the only thing that could hurt that game is that it's sometimes it works against a team when you start talking about bringing in a different leader. And it seems to be that they follow Donald pretty fiercely. And... Uh, Donald may play better, or the team may play better for Donald for that. Yeah, kind of a weird game because the Vikings are the team looking to trade for Stafford. So if you're Donald, you're kind of playing against the guy who might replace you somehow. Yeah. So probably motivation for him to win, I'll tell you that. Yes. Um, and right. if he doesn't want to go to the Vikings. <laughs> um, we go to the Titans and the Lions. Big spread here with the Lions being... Uh, that opened at nine and a half. Now it's up to 11. And that total from 45 to 45 and a half. I know 11, laying 11, and I'm not taking 11 with the Titans. I mean, you can add if you want. I mean, Lions were in a powerhouse. War. Yeah, but they were in a war. Yeah. And I don't think beating up on the Titans is their main priority. That's their other thing. The Lions at home do have a wide open offense. Yeah. Uh, one of their wide receivers, Jamison Williams, he is facing a possible two game suspension. Uh, so something to look out for uh, on that end as well. The Ravens at the Browns. Uh, Ravens opened up as nine and a half point favorites. They're now nine point favorites. Uh, total from 42 to 44 and a half. Like I mentioned earlier, Deshaun Watson torn Achilles or ACL. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Jameis Winston back in the fold, I would imagine, is going to be the Browns quarterback now. Well, he was a decent quarterback with Tampa, right? Yeah, I mean, erratic, but... He had his moments. Yeah. That's for sure. I normally don't like high lines, but I, I I don't think the fact that it went from 42 to 44 and a half is they're anticipating the line is going up. That's two and a half points on a, on a total move. I like to use totals as a gauge. Uh, the fact that the line went down from nine and a half to nine and, and, the, and the 42 went to 44 and a half is they're expecting the Browns to score. Or someone to score. Well, I was going to say, can I? let me ask you this. With it being a nine-point spread and the total going up, do they expect the Ravens to do most of the scoring then? Is that, like what, is no, that how that's the calculated? Fact that the line dropped from nine and a half to nine means they're expecting the Browns to score something. Okay. Follow me. If it went up, they'd expect the Ravens to score more. So the total's going up, and the line went down. So they're anticipating the Browns scoring. I don't see that. No, I mean. And I, to tell you the truth. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Uh 
unless the Ravens took paid advantage, paid attention to the Buccaneers getting themselves hurt for no reason. And I don't know. That was almost. I wanted to bet that game so bad. That could have been a backdoor cover. It was. It was on its way to that, being that, one. That receiver doesn't get hurt. Chris Godwin. Yeah, good receiver. I think they score there. I don't know if they could do another onside kick. I don't know why they woke up so late. I can't explain these, but all I know is I think coaches are starting to play attention, especially good ones. And this is why you're going to see some Thunder Dogs cover. They're going to start paying attention that they could bang up their team. And if they got a win in, why kill yourself? Or take a shot to get your good players injured. Uh, I think when the Bravens play offense, I think they're wide open. I mean, Henry did things that uh, is just remarkable. I mean, he, he he ran 81 yards and outran the corners and the safeties. And he was disappointed in himself that he got caught. He yeah. Said, he said, I got to work on my speed. Yeah. I mean, the guy's just, he's, he's abnormally inhuman on a football field, right. but a good human being. Let's move forward. That would be the Packers at the Jaguars. Packers opened up as three and a half point favorites. That's to four and a half total from 46 and a half to 49 and a half. Well, that's another case. I mean, I don't think the Jaguars have been putting up many points except for the one game against the Colts, right? They, I mean, they put up 32 against the Patriots in London, but I mean. That's, well, they were there for two weeks. Yeah, I was going to say the Patriots have definitely not been playing well. Their coach called them soft after the game. I don't like to go against home team underdog, but I do like the Packers. Go ahead. Colts and the Texans. Good old division showdown. Texans open six and a half. They're now six point favorites from total from 48 and a half down to 46. What did the quarterback for the Colts show you compared to? Nothing. I mean, I believe he had, I think they actually, it's funny you mentioned that. Well, they they did win. Yeah, but I mean, they did the comparison to stats. I believe he has like a 46% completion percentage. Uh, like seven touchdowns, but also like six turnovers. I mean, I like I, I genuinely and believe it was against the Dolphins. Yeah, I it mean, was a good team just without two of them. No, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think they're definitely a better team with Flacco. I'll say that. Well, he seems that he seems to instill confidence in them, which is a very important part of any athlete. Very mm-hmm. important part of every handicapper too. <laughs> Okay, uh, Cardinals Dolphins, go ahead. Ain't yeah, it? Dolphins open up as three and a half point favorites. That's down to three total from forty nine to forty six and a half. I believe Tua should be back. Tua should be back. I mean, he's doing media. I know he was activated. Um, he's not going to wear a guardian cap, which has some people very concerned for him. But uh, he should be back under normal circumstances. If Tua was an out and coming back in, I still. Like the Dolphins, the edges to the Cardinals. Two is a competitor, and look at the amount of hits he took, and he keeps coming. I mean, he he, he don't dog it. No, he certainly. He had two, and they were talking about him retiring. And he went. I mean, I don't he know said why no he shot. slid, but if he comes, he comes to play. I, I just hope he's in good shape and he doesn't take another injury. Go ahead. The Falcons and the Buccaneers. Bucks open two and a half point favorites. That's flip flopped as the Falcons are now two and a half point favorites. Total from 49 and a half down to 46. And like we've been talking about, Mike Evans, hamstring. Uh, he tried to play through it on Monday, re aggravated it. Chris Godwin, I believe it's his ankle that he broke, or maybe a part, part of the leg. Obviously, he's going to be done for the year. Uh, so I would imagine the Bucks are without their top two wide receivers in this game. Oh. Even though the Falcons let us down last week, I believe that they need to win this week. And under normal circumstances, I would have gave the edge to the Buccaneers. But without those two receivers, it's tough. I mean, yeah, you're you're trying to replace you know two thousand yards of receiving between the two of them. So yeah, it's a lot to uh, try and overcome. I like the Falcons in that game. The Jets and the Patriots. Jets opened as seven point favorites. Uh, went to six and a half. Back at seven now. Uh, that total from 38 and a half up to 41 and a half. What's your thoughts on that game? Well, Jets uh, destroyed the Patriots last time. Uh, since then, they added Devontae Adams. I don't see much changing. I think the Jets are going to win, end up winning this game again. Don Truly used to say the toughest thing to do is beat a team twice in the season. I don't think the Patriots have much. I think Aaron Rodgers uh, caught some bad breaks in that game. And listen, if the Jets want to save their season, they better they better start winning. So Aaron Rodgers wants a playoff, at least a playoff. Yeah. I don't know how many more seasons he has after this. So it's getting slim. Okay, let's move on. 
That would be to the Eagles and the <laughs> Bengals. Bengals open three point favorites down to two and a half total from 49 and a half to 47 and a half. I, I, I'll watch it. Not can't can't tell so you. The line goes down to two and a half, mm-hmm. and the total goes down. Yeah, not to tell you the Bengals are going to score less than they think. So, I, uh, you know, Cincinnati has everything it needs to be a contender, and yeah, except just, the wins. Yeah, they're just not. I mean, they beat the Browns last week, but I mean, definitely not in dominant force like everybody else has been beating the Browns and. The Eagles beat the Giants, but they kind of own them, and they're still not playing the best I've ever seen. So I don't know. This game's yeah. Bills at Seahawks. Yes, the Bills open as three point favorites. They're staying right there at three, and then that total from forty seven and a half actually went up to forty eight, and then back to forty seven. I don't know. I I don't understand that. There's no news, but who knows where people put their money? Uh, I'm gonna pass on that one. I would I would pass on that. Okay. Saints Chargers. Yes, Chargers opened to six, went to seven and a half, and then that total from forty and a half down to four. Yeah, went down to, to thirty nine and a half, and then back to, 40. to forty. Yeah. No, I, I have no opinion. No. I mean Saints I imagine are still gonna be playing with their backup QB, but not uh, not too much there. Let's go to an important one. Bears and the Commanders. Yeah, the Commanders opened up as two and a half point favorites. Obviously, I mentioned Jaden Daniels going to be out a couple of weeks, so Marcus Mariota taking over. With that being said, the Bears are now two and a half point favorites, and that total from forty eight down to forty six, down to forty three and a half. Well, the forty eight came out. Well, Marcus, I think came out. Prior to like it came out prior to the game, even being yeah, prior played. to the game. So what they're saying is without their their, their lead quarterback, and uh, I, I I think he's been pretty good for them. I mean, Mariota did play well in the second or no, when I mean, starting quarterback. Oh, Jane Daniels has been unbelievable. Yes, I think he's how bad's his injury? Uh, I think they're just saying maybe week to week. It's a bruised rib. Okay, the Bears have been showed us a lot this year. Yeah, they. I mean, they were off the bye. They're coming off a bye as well. Uh, but the week prior, they were in London. They beat the Jags pretty handedly. So, well, man, this is one of the teams I like. I'm going to tell you why. A very well coached, very disciplined team. Uh, say what you want about football; it's fought right in that eleven and a quarter inches, eleven and a half inches. Moving forward, also, it's still running, tackling, blocking, passing, catching. And I think they're a very disciplined team. I think Mariota could carry them over this however long it is. And that team wants to win. Yeah. And I think they're, they're, they're championship caliber, even with a backup quarterback, because they're evenly balanced. Yeah, they got pieces. You know, Terry McLaurin, Brian Robinson Jr. And I love home team underdog. <laughs> yes, you do. And I watched them in, in, in the previous game. They, they didn't quit. No. I mean, they put up, what was it, 40 points against the... The Panthers, I want to say it was. Well, it's still the Panthers, but I, I, you know, I think Marcus Mariota can hit his targets. Their receivers are very good. Bears got a good defense, but home team on the dog. That's definitely one of the games I'm considering, even with Daniels out. I think Daniels is a very good young quarterback. Uh, and I like the command. And that's a good thing, too. I mean, Jane Daniels, kind of a running quarterback. Marcus Mariota, the same thing. So you don't really have to overhaul the offense. It's not like you're going from one extreme and, and to the he other. And lose his agility getting older. No. no. The Chiefs at the Raiders. Chiefs opened up as 10-point favorites. They still are. And that total from 43.5 down to 40, went to 42 and then from uh, down to 41.5. I got to tell you, I don't ride the wave of, of the popular quarterback, but Mahomes showed me a lot. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, when he was running the ball, I mean, he made that move to make him think he was going out of bounds, and he never slid. He could get the extra yardage. I mean, there was sometimes it looked like their offense was stalling, mm-hmm. and he, he, you know, he's he, whatever money he gets, he deserves. No, absolutely, I, I agree. Uh, the Raiders are having a hard time putting it together, even at home. The only thing I think is everybody's going to take his foot back. Because Buccaneers were definitely destined for the playoffs. And killing themselves to come back in a game they shouldn't have, I give them heart. They fought. That was going to be a backdoor cover. You know, you could see it. But 
they weren't going to win that game. No. That would have been real tough. Two onside kicks. Yeah, it's difficult. We didn't get two all year. It's, it's hard <laughs> enough to get one onside kick, nonetheless, too. <coughs> yes. How would you see it? So, moving forward, I like the Chiefs. The money line's too high. But that's up to you. Well, all righty. The Panthers at the Broncos, that opened up four and a half and went to seven and a half. And that was at nine. Um, and that over under from 43 down to 41 and a half and then back up to 43 and a half. Well, I mean, they're expecting the, I don't know who they're expecting to score in that game, but the Broncos are not, they're very yeah. efficient, but not high power. Yeah, they're offense. not, a, I wouldn't exactly describe them as a high powered offense <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. And I don't see a shootout with the Panthers at 44 and a half. Listen, I'm not much on totals, but I got to think I like the under. I mean, yeah, I don't, Especially because the Broncos' defense is good, too. So I don't think the Panthers well, are going to score much. Just remember this. They went from four to half, seven and a half to nine. You yeah. Know what I mean? So they expect the Broncos to do most of the scoring. The number one, and they say, you know, nine point favorite. They figured there's at least nine points in yeah. there. You know, you follow me? Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a big spread. You got to, they're figuring a blowout. I don't see the Broncos winning 42 yeah. to six or eight. I'm, I'm not giving the Panthers much credit. Uh, I haven't I, earned I, much credit. You know, I don't want to lock any team, but the, you know they, they're trying to rebuild. They, 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 you know, they try. <laughs> All you can do is try. They try. The Cowboys and the 49ers, 49ers opened six and a half down to five and a half. Now at four and a half, uh, and then that total from fifty and a half down to forty seven and a half, all the way down to forty six and a half. And just one more time, like I mentioned, Brandon Ayuk done for the season. Uh, Debo Samuel in the hospital with pneumonia. CMC still isn't back. Jordan Mason obviously has been playing. Um, I know they have injuries on the defensive side as well, but I mean, they're certainly banged up. I believe the Cowboys are coming off a bye too. Uh, take that into consideration, I will say. They should let that team heal, not going balls to the wall on the Patriots that, that day. And I keep saying it. Uh, because their schedule, they, you know, they, they're playing the Chiefs is tough. I think they try to keep it as competitive as possible. Yep. But they hurt. And I, I, I believe healthy. The 49ers are one of the most talented teams that ever took the field. Oh, absolutely. And Dallas, I I don't know what happened to them. I can't explain it. No, they they fell off the map real hard. Nothing has changed with them from last year to this year. No, I mean, they lost a couple pieces, like, into free agency, but, I mean, no, they no. still have, you know, Micah Parsons and, you know, CD and Dak and, you know, all the... Dak is in a slump. He's not playing well. No. He's not sharp. That bank account's not in a slump, though. Let me tell you something. He did <laughs> real well. All right. Let's move forward. I, I, I like the 49ers. I stay away from the Cowboys. Uh, because I like the 49ers as an organization. I'm, I'm not approving of Shanahan, the way he coaches. I think he blew three Super Bowls. I think the 49ers deserve those Super Bowls. Well, two of the 49ers, one with the Falcons. Uh, I stay away from the Giants. But the Cowboys could wake up, but the 49ers can't get their players healthy. No. And I hope they get healthy and they stay in it because they are always exciting to watch. Oh, yeah. Love watching them play. Well, I can't wait to shine a hand. Blows another Super Bowl. <laughs> the final game of the week. That would be the Giants at the Steelers. Steelers open four points up to six and a half. Total from 39 down to 37 and a half to all the way down to 36 and a half. Honestly, Steelers looked like a whole brand new team of Russell Wilson. Throwing the ball downfield. Uh, outside of the numbers, I liked what I saw. You know, I've always been a big fan of Russell Wilson's. Yeah. You know, you know home games with the Seattle Seahawks. He, he writes his father, may rest in peace, on his sneakers, says he's the 13th member of the field and the most important fan. You know, uh, they told Russell Wilson he never he could have played baseball, got more money. Too small. Too small. I mean, he's in there having something to prove, and I think it adds a dimension when he, when he got these teams that he has to run backwards 10 or 15 yards just to see over him the throw. His receivers don't seem to be afraid to come back and help him out. He's guiding him. 
Giants have talent, but they, you know, I, I hate going with them and I hate going against them. But I got to tell you, I love the Steelers in that game. Yeah, the Steelers' defensive line versus that and Giants. I don't ever oh. go over three and a half points. That that Steelers defensive line versus the Giants offensive line, it might be a long night for Daniel Jones. And a not, long night. Not only that, Mike Tomlin is an excellent coach. Never had a losing season. That yeah, is insane. Excellent to me. coach. And he doesn't count a season if he doesn't go to a championship. He considers that a losing season. Hmm. He is, you know. I mean, there's a reason what the Steelers have had three coaches in like sixty five years or something insane like that. Well, I I used to be a Steeler fan. That's why sometimes I shy about away from picking them. But six and a half is a lot of points. But Steelers at home two weeks in a row. Yep. The terrible towels, the support of that team. I mean, that's a big advantage. Being, I, and I, then when they play Renegade. I like the better at four because uh, what, six and a half, I still like the Steelers. I'm going to give them a few stars here. I liked them last week. I liked them before. I should have bet them at four. That was one of my ideas, but it was not my main pick. By the way, uh, the main pick is in. Pay attention to your juice reel. Now, if a bit it doesn't stand up, there will be another pick. And once we get ahead, I'm going to get very aggressive and start increasing the increments. We are winning this season. I I have never had a losing season. I've never lost more than four in a season. And I'm not starting now. And the only way to equalize it when things go is to bet one more team. If it does go down to make it a push, which is a nothing, or increase increments. And I don't want to increase increments yet. We're one position ahead to your three or four ahead. Because then it's worth the shot exponentially. All right, I'm Chris Colombo. This is Anthony Conover. You got anything to say? Yet? I had to run back the Yankee sweatshirt because they're going to the World Series. I'm going to need this one. I wish the Mets were there with them. But uh, I hail from uh, Brooklyn, even though I was born here. I popped out. It was a summer house in Cornwall, New York. Uh, you know, I remember the stories from every year the Yankees and the, and the Brooklyn Dodgers were in it. I was a big fan of Tommy Lasorda, but I got to tell you, uh, since they moved to L.A., go Yankees. <laughs> and L.A. is an inferior coast. <laughs> mm-hmm. And also, I would like to see it because, you know, I'm, I'm used to the old Yankee Stadium. It was bittersweet for me because... People would bet the hell out of them. They'd beat me, and I'd still be happy the Yankees won. <laughs> you know? But uh, Derek Jeter cost me, and Mariano Morero cost me more money than anybody in history. But I still appreciate that team. I hope they win it this way because there was a lot of nostalgia in the old stadium, and you could actually feel it there. I'd like to have that in a new stadium just for the kids to go to see him. Okay. Chris Colombo signing off. I am getting aggressive. Pay attention to your juice reel. I didn't even look at the comments this week. I'm sure they're not good. I don't care. I'm here to win, and I don't accept losing. And there's multiple things I could do. Like I said, the play is in. The only thing I've done differently is I've waited too long.